Kashmir is the northernmost geographical region of the Indian subcontinent. Until the mid-19th century, the term, Kashmir, denoted only the Kashmir Valley between the Great Himalayas and the Pir Panjal Range. Today, it denotes a larger area that includes the Indian administered territory of Jammu and Kashmir, which includes the region of Jammu, Kashmir Valley, Ladakh, and Siachen, the Pakistani administered territories of Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan, and Chinese administered territories of Aksai Chin and the Trans Karakoram Tract. In the first half of the first millennium, the Kashmir region became an important centre of Hinduism and later of Buddhism. Later still, in the 9th century, Kashmir Shaivism arose. In 1339, Shah Mir became the first Muslim ruler of Kashmir, inaugurating the Saladin-i Kashmir or Shah Mir dynasty. Kashmir was part of the Mughal Empire from 1586 to 1751, and thereafter, until 1820, of the Afghan Durrani Empire. That year, the Sikhs, under Ranjit Singh, annexed Kashmir. In 1846, after the Sikh defeat in the First Anglo-Sikh War, and upon the purchase of the region from the British under the Treaty of Amritsar, the Raja of Jammu, Gulab Singh, became the new ruler of Kashmir. The rule of his descendants, under the paramountcy or tutelage of the British Crown, lasted until the partition of India in 1947, when the former princely state of the British Raj was claimed by both Pakistan and India. Since 1947, the greater region of Jammu and Kashmir has been embroiled in a territorial dispute between India, Pakistan and China—with India controlling approximately 43% of the land area of the region and 70% of its population. Pakistan controls roughly 37% of the land, while China controls the remaining 20%. Kashmir is widely regarded as the world's most militarized zone. The region has witnessed three major wars between India and Pakistan, another limited war between India and China, numerous border skirmishes, high mountainous warfare, an ongoing insurgency, a Hindu exodus and internal civilian unrest. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The Sanskrit word for Kashmir was Kashmira. The Nilamata Purana describes the valley's origin from the waters, a lake called Sati Saras. A popular, but uncertain, local etymology of Kashmira is that it is land desiccated from water, an alternative, but also uncertain, etymology derives the name from the name of the sage Kashyapa who is believed to have settled people in this land. Accordingly, Kashmir would be derived from either Kashyapa Mir Kashyapa's lake or Kashyapa Meru Kashyapa's mountain. The ancient Greeks called the region Kasparia which has been identified with Kaspapiros of Hecateus of Miletus Apud Stephanus of Byzantium and Kaspadiros of Herodotus 3.102, 4.44. Kashmir is also believed to be the country meant by Ptolemy Kaspiria. Kashmir is an archaic spelling of present Kashmir, and in some countries it is still spelled this way. In the Kashmiri language, Kashmir itself is known as Kashair. History Hinduism and Buddhism in Kashmir During ancient and medieval period, Kashmir has been an important center for the development of a Hindu-Buddhist syncretism, in which Madhyamaka and Yogacara were blended with Shaivism and Advaita Vedanta. The Buddhist Mauryan Emperor Ashoka is often credited with having founded the old capital of Kashmir, Srinagari, now ruins on the outskirts of modern Srinagar. Kashmir was long to be a stronghold of Buddhism. As a Buddhist seat of learning, the Sarvastivada school strongly influenced Kashmir. East and Central Asian Buddhist monks are recorded as having visited the kingdom. In the late 4th century CE, the famous Kutchinese monk Kumarajiva, born to an Indian noble family, studied Durgagama and Madhyagama in Kashmir under Bandudatta. He later became a prolific translator who helped take Buddhism to China. His mother Jiva is thought to have retired to Kashmir. Vimalaksa, a Sarvastivadin Buddhist monk, traveled from Kashmir to Kucha and there instructed Kumarajiva in the Vinayapit a.k.a. Karkota Empire 625 CE to 885 CE was a powerful Hindu empire, which originated in the region of Kashmir. It was founded by Durlabhadana during the lifetime of Harsha. The dynasty marked the rise of Kashmir as a power in South Asia. 
Avanti Varman ascended the throne of Kashmir on 855 CE, establishing the Utpala dynasty and ending the rule of Karkota dynasty. According to tradition, Adi Shankara visited the pre existing Sarvajnyapitha in Kashmir in the late 8th century or early 9th century CE. The Madhavya Shankaravajayam states this temple had four doors for scholars from the four cardinal directions. The southern door of Sarvina Pitha was opened by Adi Shankara. According to tradition, Adi Shankara opened the southern door by defeating in debate all the scholars there in all the various scholastic disciplines such as Mimamsa, Vedanta and other branches of Hindu philosophy. He ascended the throne of transcendent wisdom of that temple. Abhinavagupta C. CE was one of India's greatest philosophers, mystics and aestheticians. He was also considered an important musician, poet, dramatist, exegete, theologian, and logician, a polymathic personality who exercised strong influences on Indian culture. He was born in the Kashmir Valley in a family of scholars and mystics and studied all the schools of philosophy and art of his time under the guidance of as many as fifteen or more teachers and gurus. In his long life he completed over 35 works, the largest and most famous of which is Tantraloka, an encyclopedic treatise on all the philosophical and practical aspects of Trika and Kala known today as Kashmir Shaivism. Another one of his very important contributions was in the field of philosophy of aesthetics with his famous Abhinavabharati commentary of Natyasastra of Bharata Muni. In the 10th century, Mokshapaya or Moksapaya Shastra, a philosophical text on salvation for non ascetics, Moksha Upaya, means to release, was written on the Pradyumna Hill in Srinagar. It has the form of a public sermon and claims human authorship and contains about 30,000 slokas, making it longer than the Ramayana. The main part of the text forms a dialogue between Vashistha and Rama, interchanged with numerous short stories and anecdotes to illustrate the content. This text was later 11th to the 14th century CE expanded and Vedanticized, which resulted in the Yoga Vasistha. Queen Kota Rani was medieval Hindu ruler of Kashmir, ruling until 1339. She was a notable ruler who is often credited for saving Srinagar city from frequent floods by getting a canal constructed, named after her. Koot Kol. This canal receives water from Jhelum River at the entry point of city and again merges with Jhelum River beyond the city limits. Topic: <laughs> Shah Mir Dynasty. Shams ud Din Shah Mir reigned 1339 to 42 was the first Muslim ruler of Kashmir and founder of the Shah Mir Dynasty. Kashmiri historian Jonaraha, in his Davidiya Rajatarangini mentioned Shah Mir was from the country of Panchagavara identified as the Panjgabar valley between Rajori and Budal, and his ancestors were Kshatriya, who converted to Islam. Scholar A. Q. Rafiki states, Shah Mir arrived in Kashmir in 1313, along with his family, during the reign of Suhadeva 1301 whose service he entered. In subsequent years, through his tact and ability, Shah Mir rose to prominence and became one of the important personalities of the time. Later, after the death in 1338 of Adhyanadeva, the brother of Suhadeva, he was able to assume the kingship himself and thus laid the foundation of permanent Muslim rule in Kashmir. Dissensions among the ruling classes and foreign invasions were the two main factors which contributed towards the establishment of Muslim rule in Kashmir. Rinchen, from Ladakh, and Lankar Chak, from Dard territory near Gilgit, came to Kashmir and played a notable role in the subsequent political history of the valley. All the three men were granted jaggers feudatory estates by the king. Rinchen became the ruler of Kashmir for three years. Shah Mir was the first ruler of Shah Mir dynasty, which had established in 1339 CE. Muslim ulama, such as Mir Sayyid Ali Hamadani, arrived from Central Asia to proselytize in Kashmir and their efforts converted thousands of Kashmiris to Islam and Hamadani's son also convinced Sikandar Butchikan to enforce Islamic law. By the late 1400s most Kashmiris had accepted Islam. <laughs> Mughal rule The Mughal Padisha Emperor Akbar conquered Kashmir, taking advantage of Kashmir's internal Sunni Shia divisions, and thus ended indigenous Kashmiri Muslim rule. Akbar added it in 1586 to Kabul Subha, but Shah Jahan carved it out as a separate Subha imperial top-level province with seat at Srinagar. Afghan rule 
The Afghan Durrani dynasty's Durrani Empire controlled Kashmir from 1751, when weakling 15th Mughal Padshah Emperor Ahmad Shah Bahadur's viceroy Mu'an ul Mulk was defeated and reinstated by the Durrani founder Ahmad Shah Durrani, who conquered, roughly, modern day Afghanistan and Pakistan from the Mughals and local rulers, until the 1820 Sikh triumph. The Afghan rulers brutally repressed Kashmiris of all faiths, according to Kashmiri historians. Topic. Sikh rule In 1819, the Kashmir Valley passed from the control of the Durrani Empire of Afghanistan to the conquering armies of the Sikhs under Ranjit Singh of the Punjab, thus ending four centuries of Muslim rule under the Mughals and the Afghan regime. As the Kashmiris had suffered under the Afghans, they initially welcomed the new Sikh rulers. However, the Sikh governors turned out to be hard taskmasters, and Sikh rule was generally considered oppressive, protected perhaps by the remoteness of Kashmir from the capital of the Sikh Empire in Lahore. The Sikhs enacted a number of anti-Muslim laws, which included handing out death sentences for cow slaughter, closing down the Jamia Masjid in Srinagar, and banning the Adhan, the public Muslim call to prayer. Kashmir had also now begun to attract European visitors, several of whom wrote of the abject poverty of the vast Muslim peasantry and of the exorbitant taxes under the Sikhs. High taxes, according to some contemporary accounts, had depopulated large tracts of the countryside, allowing only one sixteenth of the cultivable land to be cultivated. Many Kashmiri peasants migrated to the plains of the Punjab. However, after a famine in 1832, the Sikhs reduced the land tax to half the produce of the land and also began to offer interest free loans to farmers. Kashmir became the second highest revenue earner for the Sikh Empire. During this time, Kashmiri shawls became known worldwide, attracting many buyers, especially in the West. The state of Jammu, which had been on the ascendant after the decline of the Mughal Empire, came under the sway of the Sikhs in 1770. Further in 1808, it was fully conquered by Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Gulab Singh, then a youngster in the House of Jammu, enrolled in the Sikh troops and, by distinguishing himself in campaigns, gradually rose in power and influence. In 1822, he was anointed as the Raja of Jammu. Along with his able general Zorawar Singh Kalariya, he conquered and subdued Rajori 1821, Kishtwar 1821, Suru Valley and Kargil 1835, Ladakh 1834 to 1840, and Baltistan 1840, thereby surrounding the Kashmir Valley. He became a wealthy and influential noble in the Sikh court. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Princely State In 1845, the first Anglo-Sikh war broke out. According to the Imperial Gazetteer of India, Gulab Singh contrived to hold himself aloof till the Battle of Sobrayan 1846, when he appeared as a useful mediator and the trusted advisor of Sir Henry Lawrence. Two treaties were concluded. By the first the state of Lahore i.e. West Punjab handed over to the British, as equivalent for one crore indemnity, the hill countries between the rivers Bees and Indus, by the second the British made over to Gulab Singh for seventy-five lakhs all the hilly or mountainous country situated to the east of the Indus and the west of the Ravi i.e. the Vale of Kashmir. Drafted by a treaty and a bill of sale, and constituted between 1820 and 1858, the princely state of Kashmir and Jammu as it was first called combined disparate regions, religions, and ethnicities. To the east, Ladakh was ethnically and culturally Tibetan and its inhabitants practiced Buddhism. To the south, Jammu had a mixed population of Hindus, Muslims and Sikhs. In the heavily populated central Kashmir Valley, the population was overwhelmingly Sunni Muslim. However, there was also a small but influential Hindu minority minority, the Kashmiri Brahmins or Pandits, to the northeast, sparsely populated Baltistan had a population ethnically related to Ladakh, but which practiced Shia Islam, to the north, also sparsely populated, Gilgit Agency, was an area of diverse, mostly Shia groups, and, to the west, Punch was Muslim, but of different ethnicity than the Kashmir Valley. After the Indian Rebellion of 1857, in which Kashmir sided with the British, and the subsequent assumption of direct rule by Great Britain, the princely state of Kashmir came under the suzerainty of the British Crown. In the British Census of India of 1941, Kashmir registered a Muslim-majority population of 77%, a Hindu population of 20% and a sparse population of Buddhists and Sikhs comprising the remaining 3%. 
That same year, Prem Nath Bazaz, a Kashmiri Pandit journalist wrote, The poverty of the Muslim masses is appalling. Most are landless labourers, working as serfs for absentee Hindu landlords. Almost the whole brunt of official corruption is borne by the Muslim masses. Under the Hindu rule, Muslims faced hefty taxation, discrimination in the legal system, and were forced into labor without any wages. Conditions in the princely state caused a significant migration of people from the Kashmir Valley to Punjab of British India. For almost a century until the census, a small Hindu elite had ruled over a vast and impoverished Muslim peasantry. Driven into docility by chronic indebtedness to landlords and moneylenders, having no education besides, nor awareness of rights, the Muslim peasants had no political representation until the 1930s. 1947 and 1948 Ranbir Singh's grandson Hari Singh, who had ascended the throne of Kashmir in 1925, was the reigning monarch in 1947 at the conclusion of British rule of the subcontinent and the subsequent partition of the British Indian Empire into the newly independent Dominion of India and the Dominion of Pakistan. In the run up to 1947 there were two major parties in the princely state, the National Conference and the Muslim Conference. The National Conference was led by the charismatic Kashmiri leader Sheikh Abdullah who tilted towards favouring the accession of Jammu and Kashmir to India whilst the Muslim Conference tilted towards favouring the accession of the princely state to Pakistan. The National Conference enjoyed popular support in the Kashmir Valley whilst the Muslim Conference was more popular in the Jammu region. The Hindus and Sikhs of the state were firmly in favour of joining India, as were the Buddhists. However, the sentiments of the state's Muslim population were divided. Scholar Christopher Sneddon states that the Muslims of Western Jammu, and also the Muslims of the Frontier Districts Province, strongly wanted Jammu and Kashmir to join Pakistan. The ethnic Kashmiri Muslims of the Kashmir Valley, on the other hand, were ambivalent about Pakistan possibly due to their secular nature although Sneddon claims that the best informed English language newspaper on the state's affairs, the CMG, reported on 21 October 1947 that there had been a massive upsurge in favour of Pakistan in the southern section of the Kashmir Valley which was the stronghold of the socialist Kizan Mazdor Conference Party led by Kashmiri Pandit Prem Nath Bazaz. Many supporters of National Conference and Sheikh Abdullah also did support Jinnah and the Muslim League. Conversely, the Times reported that Sheikh Abdullah's influence in Srinagar was paramount. The fact that Kashmiris were not particularly enamoured with the idea of Pakistan reflected the failure of the idea of pan-Islamic identity in satisfying the political urges of Kashmiris. At the same time there was also a lack of interest in merging with Indian nationalism. According to Burton Stein's History of India, Kashmir was neither as large nor as old an independent state as Hyderabad. It had been created rather off handedly by the British after the first defeat of the Sikhs in 1846, as a reward to a former official who had sided with the British. The Himalayan kingdom was connected to India through a district of the Punjab, but its population was 77% Muslim and it shared a boundary with Pakistan. Hence, it was anticipated that the Maharaja would accede to Pakistan when the British paramountcy ended on 14–15 August. When he hesitated to do this, Pakistan launched a guerrilla onslaught meant to frighten its ruler into submission. Instead the Maharaja appealed to Mountbatten for assistance, and the Governor-General agreed on the condition that the ruler accede to India. Indian soldiers entered Kashmir and drove the Pakistani-sponsored irregulars from all but a small section of the state. The United Nations was then invited to mediate the quarrel. The UN mission insisted that the opinion of Kashmiris must be ascertained, while India insisted that no referendum could occur until all of the state had been cleared of irregulars. In the last days of 1948, a ceasefire was agreed under UN auspices. However, since the referendum demanded by the UN was never conducted, relations between India and Pakistan soured, and eventually led to two more wars over Kashmir in 1965 and 1999. India has control of about half the area of the former princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, while Pakistan controls a third of the region, the northern areas and Kashmir. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, 
Although there was a clear Muslim majority in Kashmir before the 1947 partition and its economic, cultural, and geographic contiguity with the Muslim majority area of the Punjab in Pakistan could be convincingly demonstrated, the political developments during and after the partition resulted in a division of the region. Pakistan was left with territory that, although basically Muslim in character, was thinly populated, relatively inaccessible, and economically underdeveloped. The largest Muslim group, situated in the Valley of Kashmir and estimated to number more than half the population of the entire region, lay in Indian-administered territory, with its former outlets via the Jhelum Valley route blocked. Current status and political divisions The eastern region of the former princely state of Kashmir is also involved in a boundary dispute that began in the late 19th century and continues into the 21st. Although some boundary agreements were signed between Great Britain, Afghanistan and Russia over the northern borders of Kashmir, China never accepted these agreements, and China's official position has not changed following the Communist Revolution of 1949 that established the People's Republic of China. By the mid-1950s the Chinese army had entered the northeast portion of Ladakh. By 1956–57 they had completed a military road through the Aksai Chin area to provide better communication between Xinjiang and western Tibet. India's belated discovery of this road led to border clashes between the two countries that culminated in the Sino-Indian War of October 1962. The region is divided amongst three countries in a territorial dispute. Pakistan controls the northwest portion, northern areas and Kashmir. India controls the central and southern portion, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, and the People's Republic of China controls the northeastern portion, Aksai Chin and the Trans-Karakoram Tract. India controls the majority of the Siachen Glacier area, including the Saltoro Ridge passes, whilst Pakistan controls the lower territory just southwest of the Saltoro Ridge. India controls 101,338 square kilometers, 39,127 square miles of the disputed territory. Pakistan controls 85,846 square kilometers, 33,145 square miles, and the People's Republic of China controls the remaining 37,555 square kilometers, 14,500 square miles. Jammu and Azad Kashmir lie outside PIR Panjal range, and are under Indian and Pakistani control respectively. These are populous regions. Gilgit Baltistan, formerly known as the Northern Areas, is a group of territories in the extreme north, bordered by the Karakoram, the Western Himalayas, the Pamir, and the Hindu Kush ranges. With its administrative center in the town of Gilgit, the northern areas cover an area of 72,971 square kilometers, 28,174 square miles, and have an estimated population approaching 1 million, 10 lakhs. Ladakh is a region in the east between the Kunlun mountain range in the north and the main Great Himalayas to the south. Main cities are Leh and Kargil. It is under Indian administration and is part of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. It is one of the most sparsely populated regions in the area and is mainly inhabited by people of Indo-Aryan and Tibetan descent. Aksai Chin is a vast high-altitude desert of salt that reaches altitudes up to 5,000 meters 16,000 feet. Geographically part of the Tibetan Plateau, Aksai Chin is referred to as the Soda Plain. The region is almost uninhabited, and has no permanent settlements. Though these regions are in practice administered by their respective claimants, neither India nor Pakistan has formally recognized the accession of the areas claimed by the other. India claims those areas, including the area ceded to China by Pakistan in the Trans-Karakoram Tract in 1963, are a part of its territory, while Pakistan claims the entire region excluding Aksai Chin and Trans-Karakoram Tract. The two countries have fought several declared wars over the territory. The Indo-Pakistani War of 1947 established the rough boundaries of today, with Pakistan holding roughly one-third of Kashmir, and India one-half, with a dividing line of control established by the United Nations. The Indo-Pakistani War of 1965 resulted in a stalemate and a UN-negotiated ceasefire. Demographics 
In the 1901 census of the British Indian Empire, the population of the princely state of Kashmir and Jammu was 2,905,578. Of these, 2,154,695 were Muslims, 689,073 Hindus, 25,828 Sikhs, and 35,047 Buddhists implying 935 others. Among the Muslims of the Kashmir province within the princely state, four divisions were recorded – Sheikhs, Sayyids, Mughals, and Pathans. The Sheikhs, who are by far the most numerous, are the descendants of Hindus, but have retained none of the caste rules of their forefathers. They have clan names known as Krams. These Kram names included – Tantre, Sheikh, Bat, Manto, Ganai, Dar, Lan, Wani, etc. The Sayyids could be divided into those who follow the profession of religion and those who have taken to agriculture and other pursuits. Their cram name is Mir, while a Sayyid retains his saintly profession Mir as a prefix, if he has taken to agriculture, Mir is an affix to his name. The Mughals who were not numerous had cram names like Mir, a corruption of Mirza, Beg. Bondi, Bach, and Ashe. Finally, it was recorded that the Pathans, who are more numerous than the Mughals, are found chiefly in the southwest of the valley, where Pathan colonies have from time to time been founded. The most interesting of these colonies is that of Kuki Kela Fridis at Dranghaihama, who retain all the old customs and speak Pashto. Among the main tribes of Muslims in the princely state are the Buts, Dar, Lone, Jat, Gujar, Rajput, Sudan and Khatri. Some Kashmiri families belonging to Butt, Lone and Wani, Wain clans use the title of Khawaja which was given to them by Mughal governors as these families were associated with Mughal Darbar. The Khatri use the title Sheikh and the Gujar use the title Chaudhry. All these tribes are indigenous to the princely state which converted to Islam from Hinduism during its arrival in the region. The Hindus were found mainly in Jammu, where they constituted a little less than 60% of the population. In the Kashmir Valley, the Hindus represented 524 in every 10,000 of the population i.e. 5.24%, and in the frontier Wazarats of Ladhok and Gilgit only 94 out of every 10,000 persons 0.94%. In the same census of 1901, in the Kashmir Valley, the total population was recorded to be 1,157,394, of which the Muslim population was 1,083,766, or 93.6% and the Hindu population 60,641. Among the Hindus of Jammu province, who numbered 626,177 or 90.87% of the Hindu population of the princely state, the most important castes recorded in the census were Brahmins 186,000, the Rajputs 167,000, the Khatras 48,000 and the Thakurs 93,000. In the 1911 census of the British Indian Empire, the total population of Kashmir and Jammu had increased to 3,158,126. Of these, 2,398,320 were Muslims, 696,830 Hindus, 31,658 Sikhs, and 36,512 Buddhists. In the last census of British India in 1941, the total population of Kashmir and Jammu, which is a result of the Second World War, was estimated from the 1931 census was 3,945,000. Of these, the total Muslim population was 2,997,000 the Hindu population was 808,000 and the Sikh 55,000 the Kashmiri Pandits, the only Hindus of the Kashmir Valley, who had stably constituted approximately 4–5% of the population of the valley during Dagra rule 1846–1947, and 20% of whom had left the Kashmir Valley by 1950. 
1950, began to leave in much greater numbers in the 1990s. According to a number of authors, approximately 100,000 of the total Kashmiri Pandit population of 140,000 left the valley during that decade. Other authors have suggested a higher figure for the exodus, ranging from the entire population of over 150 to 190,000 1.5 to 190,000 of a total Pandit population of 200,000 200,000 to a number as high as 300,000 300,000. People in Jammu speak Hindi, Punjabi and Dogri, the Vale of Kashmir speaks Kashmiri and the sparsely inhabited Ladakh region speaks Tibetan and Balti. The total population of India's division of Jammu and Kashmir is 12,541,302 and Pakistan's division of Kashmir is 2,580,000 and Gilgit Baltistan is 870,347. Economy Kashmir's economy is centered around agriculture. Traditionally the staple crop of the valley was rice, which formed the chief food of the people. In addition, Indian corn, wheat, barley and oats were also grown. Given its temperate climate, it is suited for crops like asparagus, artichoke, sea kale, broad beans, scarletrunners, beetroot, cauliflower and cabbage. Fruit trees are common in the valley, and the cultivated orchards yield pears, apples, peaches, and cherries. The chief trees are deodar, firs and pines, chenar or plain, maple, birch and walnut, apple, cherry. Historically, Kashmir became known worldwide when Kashmir wool was exported to other regions and nations exports have ceased due to decreased abundance of the Kashmir goat and increased competition from China. Kashmiris are well adept at knitting and making pashmina shawls, silk carpets, rugs, kurtas, and pottery. Saffron, too, is grown in Kashmir. Srinagar is known for its silver work, papier-mâché, wood carving, and the weaving of silk. The economy was badly damaged by the 2005 Kashmir earthquake which, as of 8 October 2005, resulted in over 70,000 deaths in the Pakistan-controlled part of Kashmir and around 1,500 deaths in Indian-controlled Kashmir. Transport Transport is predominantly by air or road vehicles in the region. Kashmir has a 135 kilometers 84 miles long modern railway line that started in October 2009 and was last extended in 2013 and connects Baramulla in the western part of Kashmir to Srinagar and Banihal. It is expected to link Kashmir to the rest of India after the construction of the railway line from Katra to Banihal is completed. Topic. See also Kashmir Valley Jammu Ladakh Kashmir Conflict Kashmiris List of Kashmiri people 1941 Census of Jammu and Kashmir Line of Control Human Rights Abuses in Kashmir List of Jammu and Kashmir related articles Kashmir Disambiguation Topic. Notes Topic. Bibliography General history Kashmir history Topic. Historical sources Topic. External links Instrument of accession United Nations Military Observers Group in Kashmir Official website of the Jammu and Kashmir government Indian administered Kashmir Official website of the Azad Jammu and Kashmir government Pakistan administered Kashmir <laughs>